Greetings, beloved Princeton United Methodist Church community. It's Pastor Jenny here, and I'm reading today from Luke chapter 24, verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. So this very short verse, you are witnesses of these things, is near the very end of the book of Luke. It is part of the Ascension story. So in, in the Gospels, especially in Luke, not all of them report the Ascension, but Luke does. And Luke, um, uh, you know, after the, after the resurrection story, um, there are um, other things that are happening, other appearances of the risen Christ among the disciples, among the, the broader circle of disciples. And then there comes this day, 40 days after Easter, where Jesus um, says a different kind of goodbye to the disciples and to the people, and he ascends up into the heavens, ascends to be uh, with God. And um, th there is much mystery, again, here in this kind of sense of exactly what is happening here. But Jesus leaves them in this bodily form and returns home to uh, abide with God, to be in that heavenly space, that um, presence of God that is um, that is God, that is God. And so this story comes from there. And as we wrap up our Easter worship series about go tell it on the mountain, um, about embracing a, a, a new idea or renewing our ideas around and practices around evangelism, this is a beautiful way to end this um, these six weeks together. You are witnesses of these things. I know that just like the word evangelism, the word witness or the word testimony uh, are kind of can can be hard for us. We don't. Um, some of us have been in traditions where witnessing or testifying were very normal, but for a lot of us, that um, can feel like an uncomfortable sort of word. Indeed, in our um, our membership vows in the United Methodist Church, the word witness was added. Uh, a, a, I don't know, a dozen or so years ago, so that it was added to the list of membership vows that we uphold the church, the Princeton United Methodist Church, by its prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And so I think that is a way of saying to the church, hey church, this is part of what we are to do, that we are called to do. And we aren't always great at it. It feels scary. It feels difficult to think of ourselves as as witnesses, as people who testify to um, the work of God in the world. Maybe one way to ease this up a little bit, ease up our thinking, uh, to make it a little more uh, something that we can find ourselves in, um, is a way of saying, you know, that to, to witness to is to, um, to look around, to recognize where God is active in the world, to recognize where God is active in our lives, in my life, to have God's sightings, to, to see um, where God is active in the world and to name that. So we have to both recognize where God is, see what God is doing and um, say that, point it out in some way or another. There are many ways that we can do this. Um, and one of those ways, of course, is telling our faith stories. Um, we can do that in a lot of ways, but we can also do it in much smaller ways. We can do it in ways that um, lift people up and help people know their belovedness. We can look at people and look at the world and say, oh, God was doing something there. God is, is active in this space of healing or this place where something um, was forgiven or in these ways that we are sustained and held and comforted or given strength or boldness um, to do the things that we need to do in our lives. We're going to explore this just a little bit more on Sunday alongside of the children's. Um, uh, the children are doing a play, a musical play. The children's choir has been working hard over these last few months to bring to you the message um, this week in worship. And they are sharing with us a, the story, a different story, uh, but a witnessing story nonetheless, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were thrown into the fiery furnace, into Nebuchadnezzar's fiery furnace, because they refused to bow down to a God other than Yahweh. 
They knew who God, their God was. They knew that Yahweh, the God of creation, the God of life, the God of, um, of the Exodus, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God um, who had been with them through so many things was still their God and there was no other God that they could give their witness to, to give their testimony to, to give their allegiance or obedience or their, um, their devotion to. And so their witness came in one of, of, of standing up to power, to standing up to the king, standing up um, and saying, you know, the only God that I have is God, and I will risk um, for this God. So they, they witnessed through their, their words, they witnessed through their actions, they witnessed, um, and, and without knowing exactly what was going to happen to them, knowing that it could cost them greatly in all sorts of ways. So we get to hear the children talk about this or sing about this, uh, tell us this story in beautiful ways on Sunday. I know you'll want to, to see and hear all of that. Um, there are many things going on, as always, in the life of our church. The following Sunday, uh, May 19th, is Pentecost. So um, after that ascension, a story happens. The story of Pentecost comes next. And so we will celebrate that story um, and the ways that uh, the Holy Spirit coming into us, upon us, uh, working through us, enables us and empowers us to continue to be witnesses in this world um, in all the ways that we are empowered and emboldened to do that. Um, it, it is there to sanctify us and make us holy like God is holy. And so we will continue to look at that. But on May 19th, we have a grand celebration. We have um, conf a confirmand being confirmed. We have people being baptized. We have newcomers joining the church. Um, we have uh, a beautiful celebration planned that day. Um, Soon, in the beginning of June, June 2nd, we have a celebration for Skitch, Pastor Skitch. He'll be preaching that day. This will be his last time preaching at Princeton UMC, and we'll be, have a joint service with Kingston UMC um, that day, and we'll have a celebration for Pastor Skitch after worship. You will find in this, um, in this happenings, in the email here, uh, a place to sign up for his celebration. And in there, you can also find a way to um, sign up to bring food. It's going to be part self-catered and part catered. And so you can sign up to be part of the self-catering. You can also sign up um, to help pay for that catering, catered part. There's also a place if you would like to give a monetary gift to him, um, please do it through the church and you can do it through that same, uh, that same link there. If you need assistance with that in any other way, you can uh, contact the church office. Um, so this that time of year, lots of things happening. Um, we have also in these next weeks, we've got um, you know Taylor, Pastor Taylor's being commissioned at our annual conference. There are some reports from General Conference you'll want to keep up with. That General, these are lots of conferences. The General Conference, of course, is our worldwide gathering of United Methodist uh, decision makers. They um, they uh, make decisions. They're the only body that speaks for the whole United Methodist Church, and they had big things happening. Oh, over these past couple of weeks. Uh, so we'll give you some updates about that here. Our annual conference is just for the United Methodists of Greater New Jersey. That is our all of New Jersey, plus a little bit of New York and Pennsylvania too. We'll be gathering in Wildwood, New Jersey, starting uh, May 19th, 20th, and 21st. Um, and you can live stream all of that um, with us from afar. You can also come to, this, to the commissioning service should you want to do that um, in person or live streamed for Taylor. Um, we also have right now open a worship theme survey. So every year about May, we send you a, um, a little survey that helps you, that helps us, that helps the, the clergy uh, look at the worship series as we plan over the summer for the next year. And truly, your responses to this make a difference in the planning of, of, the, uh, of the worship series. Um, we look at what you say and, and work to put, bring a lot of thoughts uh, together um, to, to share in the worship series over the coming year. So please take a minute and or a few to respond to that survey. Um, it's not a checklist of what topics do you want to, uh, to talk about, although you can add those if you would like, but it is more trying to get a sense of where your heart and mind are. What, is, what are the things that are stirring in your life 
where is God stirring in your life, but also where is life stirring for you? Um, what are the things that you are uh, uh, occupied with, preoccupied with, wondering about? Um, it's, it, these are the kinds of things that we're asking about and inviting you to share. Um, there are, again, lots of things in this email, and you'll want to check them out. At least scroll down through and look to all the things. And I commend you one more time to this, um, this set of little uh, of exercises. Some are, some are little, some are big. Some are uh, maybe big for you and small for someone else and vice versa. But I invite you to continue to explore and, um, and find our way into being witnesses, to being testifiers, to, being, uh, to finding our evangelistic roots people who are out proclaiming the good news of God's love um, that all people need to hear, not out of fear, not out of guilt, but out of a love that brings us to life, that helps all of us experience the fullness of life that we know through the life, death, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. So friends, um, keep telling it on the mountain, and I can't wait to be in worship with you soon. Remember that you are enough because God is enough. Remember that you were created for joy, and it is indeed a joy for me to journey with you these days. I will see you very soon.